Hello, darling. I got all dressed up for you. So, thank you for putting up with videos where I show up and I just roll out of bed and have bed hair. But in exchange for that every so often, you get to see me looking super fancy and glam. Why am I all dressed up? Because I was in court today and I had to. Actually, this is not the blazer I wore, nor is this the fabulous dress I wore. Um, but, you know, I did all of makeup, so I figured I'd do a couple of videos, but anyone who knows me well knows that this is a scam. I'm really, bam, a Jedi Knight. <laughs> Cold source to uh, Sarah's Jedi onesie. Yeah. But in the video, I'm looking spiff. So if I had a music intro, I still need to ask Allison to put out. It would go here. No, just pretend. Spit your music intro. And now uh, I'm gonna talk about something. Shoot. I had I had a I had a topic. <laughs> it's been a long day. Today we are going to be talking about dropping the rope hard. What does it mean? What does it entail? Why you might want to or need to do this for your own mental and emotional health. So um, a lot of times someone is, will come on to Just No Mill and they will go, this is all of the stuff that's going on and it's all driving me crazy. And um, everyone is just going to go, honey, you just need to drop the rope um, if they're from the South. Otherwise, uh, or, or maybe sometimes Brooklyn. Uh, Sometimes you'll get Chica, you need to drop that rope, or uh, variations depending on the ethnic group. Uh, I, I've spent the last 20 years trapped in the South, so mine usually start with honey. Mm, honey, you gotta drop the rope. So when like 40 women tell you, baby doll, drop the rope, and you go, what the fuck does this mean? Here's what we mean. Um, Traditionally, in most cultures, especially most cultures in the United States, women have been expected to be the social secretary of the family. So um, this is particularly unfair in modern households, where as a, like, if you are a stay-at-home parent or the stay-at-home spouse, you are basically busting your ass from dawn till midnight every single freaking day. And anyone who gives stay-at-home moms shit for being lazy has obviously never been a stay-at-home parent because you are go, 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 going all day long. You have so much to do. And if you work, most of the time, uh, women work as much as their male partners do. So you go to work, you're working the same number of hours, you come home, and usually in the United States, statistically, um, men do much less housework and childcare than women do. So your partner is sitting, reading a book, you are cooking, cleaning, handling kids' homework, taking the dog out to poo. Like, you have a lot to fucking do on your plate. And, um, you, like, 50, 60 years ago, this wasn't always the case, but today, you generally get married to someone who you expect to be your equal, your peer. Not someone that you want to serve. They We take the whole equally yoked thing a lot more seriously than even some older religious families do. Because um, I can sure as hell tell you that when I was working outside of the house, where, you know, uh, my commute was longer, sometimes my hours were longer, busting ass all day, coming home, doing the cooking, eh, the cleaning sometimes fell to the side. But um, I am the only person in the house who checks the stock up levels. I'm like, I've dropped the rope on this one in my house and we've been running out of toilet paper, but for 15 years, we never ran out of toilet paper because I would check the stock levels of all the paper products in the house and purchase them before we ran out. So like we never went below like one or two boxes of Kleenex and like toilet paper. Like we always had a, like I managed the inventory. Um, I checked for sales. I like would buy a lot more food than we could have purchased for the same amount of money if I hadn't been checking the sales. Like all of this stuff takes a lot of energy and work. Um, I did uh, um, most of the cooking for a very long period of time. I have not done most of the cooking for the last month and honestly it's been kind of nice. I kind of miss it sometimes, but um, other times I don't. <laughs> 
Um, you know, um, I did most of the sitting down with the kid and helping with her homework when she needed it. Uh, you know, like we homeschooled for a year. Like, there's just a lot of work to do. And you know what isn't fair? For me to also have to be the one who remembers all of my spouses, because I have three wives and like six mother in laws, keep in mind. Um, like, remember everybody's birthdays, remember everybody's anniversaries, call everybody, schedule play dates with the kid, make sure that people remember to call other people on their birthdays, get Christmas presents, get birthday presents, get anniversary presents, get cards for holidays, make sure that they're sent out on time. Like, that is considered emotional labor. Um, I'm going to try to put a little thing here that says emotional labor. Uh, it's a lot of work. Okay, it is a lot of work. And since it's primarily done by women, it's generally underappreciated low status work in our culture. And it's one of the reasons why old ladies love Facebook so psychotically is because that sort of... Um, low-key keeping in touch with each other, that, that sort of social grooming, um, all of that work has primarily been placed on the feet of women in our culture for the last several hundred years. Uh, there's all sorts of dysfunction that comes from that. And uh, it's not fair for women, and it's not fair for men. Okay, um, men who have heart attacks, who have stronger social connections, have a better survival rate. So if the woman does all of the work and like, keeps in better touch with her friends than her husband's old army buddies because she doesn't like that just makes sense um it actually lowers your life expectancy as a man if you have put all of the social management for the family on the wife's shoulders if there's a divorce and i, I mean i've seen this over and over again with older couples um you know if you're in your 50s and the woman has done all of the maintenance for the social networks and there's a divorce, the guy is left bereft of friends. You know, I mean, it's, it's, so it's, it's unhealthy for guys. It like reduces their life expectancy. It does bad things in case of marital split up or, or disharmony. Like it, it's, it's shitty for men. It's also shitty for women to add this extra layer of work. And guys are like, well, it's just a birthday card. Can't matter that much. Look, if one of your friends sends you a birthday card and you get it, like a physical card in the mail around your birthday, it's going to make you feel good. And it's those small little pieces of social interaction that build up over time into a stronger social network. Like setting up play dates for your kids. Is that fun? Oh God, when my kid was play date age, there were times I would rather shove a screwdriver in my eye socket than fucking hang out with the, the mommy crew. Like, mm, um, I'm sure I, I will actually make this, that video after this one. I'll be in the same spiffy outfit with the same Jedi onesie, but I think it's a snuggie actually, technically, um, cause it's open backed like hospital gown for Jedis. Okay. A lot of these women had zero identity and zero interest in an identity outside of being mommy. That is super dysfunctional, super creepy, really, really bad for you because eventually your kids are going to grow up and move out and then you're left with nothing. And it leads to super dysfunctional behavior. Um, and it makes you boring as fuck to hang out with. So I'd be at the park and I'm like, like, I, I know the urge to lose yourself in mommy identity, but I'm sitting there going like, I don't even drink. And I need a fucking drink because all these people, all they have to talk about are the kids. And I'm like, have you read any books that don't have pictures in them? And they hadn't. I'm like, okay, do you have any hobbies outside of your children? And they didn't. So anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, it's, it's unhealthy. Because when your youngest turns 35 and, like, you still talk about being mommy, like, the fuck? Get a hobby. Get a personality. Move on. Anyway. Um, it's unhealthy. Leaping like a gazelle back to the previous topic of conversation. Um, 
having women be the only ones who manage the playdates for the kids and socializing and scheduling for the holidays. It's unhealthy because men actually need to do some of this work themselves to maintain relationships because it's important. Um, like, so you actually maintain your own friendships and you don't die early because you've stopped doing that for yourself and people stopped caring about you because you didn't show any actual interest in other people's lives because you let your wife do all of it. Um, and it's also super unhealthy for the woman. So when people are like, honey, these people do not appreciate you. They don't appreciate the time that you put in. They have forgotten that phones go two ways. They have forgotten that roads go two ways. Um, drop the rope. We'll be, what we're basically saying is your husband's family is your husband's problem. Like, all of these things you've been juggling, this rope you've been tugging on and pulling on to get everything done, just drop it. You are no longer the point of contact. If your mother-in-law wants baby pictures, then she needs to text your husband. He has a cell phone. He's more than capable of taking baby pictures. He's more than capable of sharing those baby pictures. It is not your job, on top of everything else that you do, to keep her stocked up on baby photos. It is not your job to send somebody who hates your guts and says nasty shit about you behind your back and in front of you every single chance that, that she gets. Not your fucking job to buy her a thoughtful Christmas present. Your husband can do that. And you know what? He will probably fuck it up and he will probably not get him anything good. You drop that rope. It is not your job, nor should it be your responsibility. Eh? to set up play dates so that your in-laws can come trash your house, insult you, insult your housekeeping, insult your parenting and get to spend time with your kid. It is perfectly okay for you to say, you know what, honey, your mother makes me uncomfortable and she talks shit about me. So I don't want her here unless you're here and you can't check out. You cannot sit there and like pick up your phone and ignore the shit that she says. You have to actually be present if you want her here. Oh, you're going to get some pushback on that. But you know what? Drop that rope. It is not your fucking job to be a meat shield so that your husband doesn't have to actually interact with his mom, but gets all of the bonus points from his family for putting your child up on a plate and presenting them to your mother-in-law. Fuck that noise with a trumpet. Woo! No. Um, <laughs> sending birthday cards. You can send a text. Personal text, just from you, not necessarily from you and your husband. He needs to get off his ass. Log on to Facebook every so often and check when people's birthdays are. Because let me tell you, if somebody's birthday isn't on Facebook, I'm not going to remember it. I remember my wife Sarah's birthday because it is literally four days before mine. And when we moved in together, we had a roommate whose birthday was right in the middle. So it was 14, it was 12, 14, 16. So we basically had a week long birthday party uh, when we got together. Um, my wife, Allie's birthday is on an astronomical holiday and Ash, if it's not for Facebook, I would totally botch it every year. Uh, yeah, your husband can either schedule it into his phone when everybody's birthdays are or look it up on Facebook or whatever. Not your job. His family, his circus, his monkeys, his fucking problem. But it's also not your job to set up, you know, uh, um, times for your husband, remind your husband to call his family. No. And if they start pitching, oh, you're just keeping him away from us. I'm not doing a damn thing. I'm not encouraging him anymore because you know what? You kept saying I was keeping him away from you, even though I was the only one reminding him to call you. So you're just going to like treat me like shit. Then no, I'm not going to remind him to call you. Not my job, not my circus, not my monkeys. He can call you whenever he damn well wants. I'm just not going to remind him anymore because I'm sick of your shit. Drop that rope. Oh, it feels so good when you let go. It's like taking a 12 pound poop. <laughs> like, seriously, just whew, let it go. Let it go. Because a lot of times when we picked up these rules, it's not even because anybody asked us to. We just assumed it was our job. We just assumed as women that this was what we needed to do. And I bought 
my mother-in-law birthday and Christmas presents for a very long time. Uh, in fact, every single birthday or Christmas present that she got, and most of the cards, uh, I went out and purchased. This is my mother-in-law, who those of you who follow my story might know is Lois Lane. Um, she didn't like me, which is allowed. Like, I'm strong copy. Some people love me. Some people hate me. People don't have to like me. Um, but she didn't like me because at her at that point single parent, nearly 30 year old child didn't ask permission to start dating again. Actually, Allie had been dating for years at that point, just never seriously enough to bring anyone home. So uh, she hated me before she met me because of something that actually had nothing to do with me, another thing to do with her control freak need to control freak on people. So, um, and when she tried to parent my stepdaughter, um, who I almost never call my stepdaughter. If, you, if you're wondering about my child, my daughter, yeah, that's, that's her. Uh, and she tried to parent her over me and override me. And I was like, no, I'm mom, you're grandma, stay in your lane. <laughs> Flat out. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fight with somebody about, like, if, if my kid's grounded, you don't get to come to me and go, well, I don't think that your child should be grounded. I'm like, well, Everybody has an opinion, just like buttholes. Most of them stink. You have that opinion. It will do absolutely nothing. <laughs> you you enjoy having that opinion. Um, good for you for having the bravery to voice it, but uh, I'm not changing how I'm disciplining my child for acting out because it inconveniences your fun time with them. If my kid acts up, they don't get to go to fucking Disneyland. Uh, and, uh, you know, kids, I'm pouring a little bit of salt into a thingy because I snack on salt when I'm fasting. Um, and I've been eating for days and I feel gross. <laughs> I can't wait to start fasting again. Um, but, um, you know, I'm not changing how I'm disciplining my kid for fucking up because somebody else wants to go and have fun and play with my child. Mm -mm. No. That's not how it goes. You don't get out of being grounded because grandma wants to take you to the zoo. You just miss out on going to the zoo. Well, I don't think she should be punished for that. Well, that's why you're in the grandma lane and I'm in the mom lane. And you know who wins? Mom. So we butted heads on that for a bit. Um, I think she really expected to be the southern matriarch of the family and my Yankee ass shows up and <laughs> just has no interest in having anybody try to take a maternal role with me because if you know anything about me at all uh, you may notice that my dad my awesome daddy has three pictures in my office and i get to see him every single day and i do not have a single photograph of my mother anywhere nor will i because i will never speak to her again willingly now, there are some things i might do where i would speak to her for instance Somebody offers to fly me to a really fancy location and there's a talk show. I might actually tell her what I think about her. Hey, Dr. Phil. Um, I'll even say it without dropping all the cursing that I do here. Like, I'll say it so you can air it. Like, if you just wanted to watch me, like, rip an evil old lady to shreds on television, I'm down for that. But I need to get paid for it. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I need to cut so much of this out. <laughs> I'm wandering. Um, but yeah, like for years, like every single thoughtful present and card was from me. Uh, did I ever get thanked? Nope. Um, you know, when I, I, I would remind my daughter to call her grandmother, I would remind my spouse to call their parents. And, um, it caused resentment by the people who lived in my house because they didn't like being nagged or reminded to do something they needed to do. And it caused resentment for me because I, like, um, I kind of resented having to remind people to take care of their relationships with grandma. And it caused a lot of resentment between me and my mother-in-law because um, nothing I did was ever good enough. And it was my fault for keeping her family away from her uh, because she didn't understand that the only reason they called her at all for the last two years was because I nagged them to. 
So I was just like, okay, you know what? You're right. I'm going to keep them. I'm going to be evil. So evil. And I'm just not going to say anything. And they can get you their own fucking presents. And they can text you on your birthday without me making them. Can you see the horns? Can you see the flames shooting out of my eyes? Truly, that is devilish. I basically I dropped the rope. I was so much happy after, happier afterwards. The only person who lost in that situation was my mother-in-law. But she was never going to be happy with me anyway. And I have had enough in my life of like busting my ass to keep people happy who are never going to be happy. So drop the rope. If you're doing all of this extra emotional labor to like arrange play dates and visits and phone calls and FaceTime and sending photos and gifts and cards and blah and blah and blah and blah. Nope. Not your job. And if it's your family, you know what? You don't have to do any of that shit. That is actually something that comes naturally out of a close relationship for someone whose primary love language is giving gifts. Like the gifts and the cards. Or spending time. In, well, if you're... So, like, if your love language is spending time, then, like, setting up time to go to like weekly family dinners or making weekly family dinners and inviting people like that brings joy to your life. If you were sitting there like, Oh, oh mommy needs a martini or 12. It's not bringing joy to your life. Marie Kondo that shit. It doesn't spark joy out. It goes. Go. Be gone. Drop the rope. You will feel so much better. So you'll have so much more energy. You'll feel better. And if your mother-in-law calls you and it's like, why am I not getting pictures anymore? You just say, ask your son. It's his job. Not my job to take care of your emotional needs. I, 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 have, I have just resigned as the social caretaker for the family. And you will have older women who refuse to ask their own sons for pictures or visits or play dates because... After all, God damn it, you're a woman. This is your job. Nope. Nope. No. No. Just dip out. You're gone. <laughs> Did I do that right? I have no idea. So yeah, dip out. Drop the rope. Let it go. Sing the Elsa song. Let it go. And if it matters enough to your husband to bitch at you for not doing it, you can tell him he can get off his ass and do it himself. He probably won't even notice. Do you have any idea how many times on Just No Mail people will be like, my mother-in-law said she hated me and I was keeping her from her son and her grandson and I was doing, you know, Easter, Christmas, birthday, blah, 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 like all of her cards. And they kept inviting them over for dinner and cooking and cleaning. And like anytime we had to go anywhere, I'd spend 45 minutes getting the toddler and something cute in the car with a backup cute outfit in case they decided to vomit shit or otherwise destroy the cute outfit. You know, drive an hour and a half to their house, wrangle the toddler, wrangle the husband as he completely ignores and tunes out the bitchiness because that's how a lot of guys handle having a verbally and emotionally abusive mom they just check out so you're the one who's having to handle all of it and do all of the interference no 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 and then when you drop the rope and you're like no not my fucking job anymore not the circus not my monkeys you do it abby if you care if you care you have access to all of those baby pictures and you can text your mother and they won't do it because dealing with their mother is a huge pain in the ass. And they're really, really bummed that you won't take that bullet for him anymore. That's what dropping the rope is. And it's great because at the same time, you can drop the rope of caring what these people who are never going to like you think about you. They're always going to think that you're a bitch. So why are you putting all of this energy and effort into like doing nice, thoughtful things for them? Do nice, thoughtful things to people who actually like have been nice to you and deserve thoughtful things. So um, like call that teacher in high school 
who was really supportive of you. Write them a card. The further out from high school you've been, the more it will touch them. Uh, you know, like call that person who mentored you at the first job that you had that meant so much to you. Go to their LinkedIn and say, this person changed my life. You know, like find that neighbor who's always nice to you. And instead of baking something lovely for somebody who's going to just bitch about it the entire time, bake something lovely for them. Instead of wrangling your toddler to some hellish event where there's nothing age appropriate and you have to completely spend your entire time grabbing glass figurines that they refuse to move out of toddler height out of their hands so that they won't shatter them and then eat the glass figurine shards and choke to death because toddlers are tiny suicidal drunk people or at least that's how they act um like go someplace that you want to go Dump the child with their dad because it's not babysitting. It's fucking parenting and men can do it. They are perfectly capable. And uh, get yourself a mimosa and get your nails done or whatever brings you joy. For me, it's usually alcohol and polish because I am like a pumpkin spice and Uggs basic bitch. So I embrace that about myself. I'm okay with this. Even though I don't own any Uggs and I don't actually like pumpkin spice that much but it's okay you know what i'm talking about you know uh so yeah do things that make you feel better even if you don't leave the house if you're broke because yeah having young children holy shit nothing makes these broke as babies um get yourself in bubble bath lock the door to the bathroom roll up a towel and stick it underneath so that you don't have mom 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 because they put their little fingers under the door and try to open it. Go ask your dad. Mommy's not here. It's the snorkel monster type of way. Eat a sandwich. Read a book. Have a mimosa. Whatever you need to do for your bubble bath, you do it. Drop that rope. Let it go. You are free. If you need somebody's permission, you have my permission. You have my blessing. Humana, 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 humana. Boom. You no longer have to be the social, like, meat shield for your family against your super demanding in-laws. Let it go. It's okay. You can do it. I believe in you. All right. If you need more help, come on down to Just No Mill. It is a subreddit. We are awesome. We are fabulous. And um, I'm the shittiest moderator on the mod team. I am the Mad Pirate Bippy. And uh, I'm heading out.